Ah, Crusader Kings 3. A game where you can live out your medieval dreams and go burn some witches or go on a pilgrimage. Who wouldn't want to play this game? I personally just can't wait for Glitterhoof to be added in, everyone's favourite CK2 animal. Sadly, the next Crusader Kings 3 expansion won't be focused on animals, but instead the Iberian Peninsula. It's coming up to three years since the release of Crusader Kings 3, and I think it's fair to say the release of DLCs has been relatively slow, with one Viking flavour pack and then the newly released expansion of Royal Court. But now, after long delays with the Crusader Kings 3 Royal Court DLC, we now have a relatively quick expansion coming out on the 31st of May, which is actually much faster than usual with the track record they've had. Iberia has always been an interesting start in Crusader Kings 3, since it's very fragmented at the start of the game. The three brothers of Leon, Castile and Aragon are always quite fun to play in multiplayer, as you can inherit each other's kingdoms if you manage to kill the other brothers in any way possible. We are trying to get to 100,000 subscribers by the end of the month, so we can have a fan meet up in all. So if you want to see that happen, make sure to subscribe. Without further ado, let's first of all discuss what we know so far about this new flavour pack. Analysing the dev diary, we can firstly see that it's not just about bringing flavour to the region, but also specifically for the Christians and Muslims of the region, and therefore making religion more relevant to gameplay, which we haven't seen so far in Crusader Kings 3 in comparison to Crusader Kings 2. Many people are aware of the Battle of Tours, which prevented the Muslim invasion of modern day France. So actually, Iberia is quite a historically relevant region during the 867 AD start date. To enhance religion gameplay, Paradox have therefore decided to add a new system within the game known as a struggle, so you can decide the fate of Iberia. Christians and Muslims on the Iberian Peninsula were let's say not the best of friends, so it's good that Paradox are taking that into account and are trying to make an effort to bring this conflict between these two religions to life a bit more. Paradox stated that more information about the system is to come out in the next developer diary, but from what I can see here, it seems the Iberian Peninsula within the struggle region is put into different states that allow or limit your options depending on how hostile the Christians and Muslims are to one another. It seems you can choose tasks like killing a Catholic Duke or converting characters to your faith, which worsens tensions and potentially allows you to declare a holy war on a Muslim state. First impressions of this mechanic are actually fairly positive from my end, and I can definitely see some campaigns where I potentially use this to my advantage. However, I would say this game needs new mechanics that makes the game more difficult and harder for you in your campaign. Many Paradox players have mentioned this quite a few times, as it definitely feels a lot easier than Crusader Kings 2, and actually probably way easier than what these historical figures had to deal with in medieval times. Moving on, Paradox have also decided to add an 867 bookmark, where they've added far more historical accuracy to the figures within the Iberian Peninsula. The stories you hear about medieval backstabbing, killing, lusting, is all really fascinating, so in my opinion, Paradox could never have too much history in their games, and therefore it makes sense to have this in the flavour pack. One starting character that stands out to me is Guthrie the Hairy. I just picture Bigfoot roaming around Crusader Kings 3 and terrorising the locals, but in actual fact, Guthrie, or Wilfred the Hairy, was responsible for the repopulation of a long depopulated no man's land around Vic, the re establishment of the Bishopric of Vic, and the foundation of the monastery of Santa Maria de Repol. Sadly, this has absolutely nothing to do with Bigfoot. Paradox also mentioned an interesting scenario where Amir Danis and Abin Marwan are both dukes under the Sultanate of Al Andalus, but they are also neighbours and rivals so starting with one of them will certainly imply crossing swords and scheming against the other. Getting back on topic though, it will be interesting to see if Paradox decide to add anything more about the history behind this region. I surely hope so. A small addition, but yet good to see, is Paradox have decided to add more historical costumes of the Iberian Peninsula, which may make you feel more immersed in the game. The final thing we are going to discuss is the development of the map of Iberia. Paradox have decided to seize the opportunity and update the map, adding better county and duchy divisions. I'm not really sure that many people are going to care about this, as I don't spend my time thinking about whether Crusader Kings 3 borders are historically accurate. 
and the likelihood is, it's probably a good thing we will get a Voltaire's Nightmare 2.0, which will melt half a player base's PCs. Paradox have also decided to redo the cultures and face of the area. From these new screenshots, we can see the differences, but honestly again, I'm not sure how bothered people will actually be about these changes, as I don't think it will significantly change gameplay for the better, and everyone's suddenly really interested. So having looked at the dev diary, I am overall positive about this DLC, but again, there are always going to be a few things you must consider. With Paradox's last Crusader Kings 3 DLC, Roll Court, the reception from fans was relatively positive, but people didn't believe the price of a DLC was actually worth getting, with it being roughly 30 US dollars. Some people had to admit that not having different courts for the various vassal levels below King and Emperor is a strange decision since there are plenty of examples throughout history where a powerful vassal has a vibrant court that rivals the kings. One example I can think of is Good King Rene, who was known for his vibrant court. The perception of this flavour pack will therefore be heavily dependent on the price, and that hasn't come out yet. In my opinion, Paddocks need to add a lot to the flavour pack for people to consider buying it, and I believe the next few dev diaries will determine for quite a few people on whether they buy it. Perhaps flavour packs will be the way to go, as I think given how old the game is already, the fans of Crusader Kings 3 need more flavour quickly so that the fan base is maintained, which is still smaller than European Universalis 4 and Hearts of Iron 4. Despite the push by Paradox for this game to become more mainstream, they've even added a console edition of Crusader Kings 3. Strategy games are not known for being amazing on console, and so it hasn't particularly topped the charts of PS5 games. But regardless, you can clearly see that Paradox have a vision for this game, and they want it to be one of their future masterpieces that potentially overtakes the current flagship games we have today. In my opinion, therefore, this Iberian flavour pack needs to add real value to the gameplay in order to get the fanbase interested, and that's a lot of pressure on a flavour pack. When Origins came out for European Asylus 4, many people had really low expectations, and so it was a success, but the bar was really quite low, and the E for audience is a little fed up with the sheer amount of DLC that has been added to European Asylus 4. What do you guys think though? Can you potentially see this flavour pack as being a game changer for Crusader Kings 3? Or do you think it'll be a nice addition to an already successful game, but on the whole, won't add that much to the game? Let me know in the comments. Thank you guys for watching, I hope you enjoyed the video, and I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye for now. Shout out to our Patreons, Jay Erickson321, Shadowsinger, Jado52, Cargan, Flyerton, Henrique, Redguard76, Xiaomi, and Charlie Demorel. Your support means a lot guys. 